fall. The legendary raid is back again in D2. Starting off, we have an intro to this raid um, where you're going to have to split your team into three groups of two people. So two stay middle, hold down middle, two go right with one runner and one defender, and also same on left side. The runners will pick up the relic on each side every time, and their job is going to have to slam those relic both at the same statue. As for people who are locking down middle, their job is to add clear and shoot the door on their left and right side. Basically, you shoot the blight to get the doors open so the runners and one of the defenders can make in. And as for people who are holding the relic, make sure you guys pick up the relic at the same time because you'll have a timer and in that certain amount of time, you will have to dunk in the statue, in the same statue at the same time. Uh, there's no uh, penalty if the timer runs out, uh, but you will have to go back and go grab the relic once again. Dunk on all six statues in order to access the portal, and you'll be on to the next part. Go through the portal to collect your first reward, and after that you will be encountered by the first jump and puzzle of this raid. So the first part of this jump and puzzle is actually quite simple. It's going to be like moving and swinging plates or platforms. Just jump across them and make it to the next one. The next one is going to be, you're going to have to wait for everyone until you are together. And then you see, you'll see like a, a ship which you're going to have to jump over. Keep in mind, this ship will disappear after when it moves for a certain time and then you're gonna have to jump to the next ship which is gonna spawn to your right just follow the path for this jump and puzzle on screen like exact path and you should be able to make it to the final platform Once you make it to the final platform up above, uh, you're going to have to at least have four people with you. So you'll be able to see two plates on first part, which is going to be left and right part. Like there's going to be like a left plate and a right plate. Have two people standing on their plates to get rid of the barrier in the doorway. You'll see a green sort of greenish barrier in the, in the middle, which will block your way. Uh, but you can kind of like get uh, passed by that. Uh, it, but all you need to do is have like one person on each side, one on left plate and one on right. And then one person or two people, depending on whoever made it, can hop onto the ship. And before the barrier door, you're going to have to jump across and get to the platform or get to the, the small ledge, which will lead you to a secret chest. Once everyone makes on the other side, uh, they're going to be another two plates, which 
the two people can step on. They're going to be on the same exact location on left and right. After grabbing the chest, just hop down. You'll be able to see the plates and have like uh, one person on each side to get rid of the barrier so the other people can make it through. Moving on to your first actual encounter of this raid, you're going to have to split your team into three people on right and three people on left. Now, what these three people will have to do is they're going to have to grab a buff called Aura of the Weaver. Now, the way to pick up this buff is it's going to be located before you go into the totem rooms. It'll, it'll be on each side at the start. Pick up this buff to start the encounter. Once you start this encounter, one person on each side will go on their totems with the buff and they will stay on the totem and kill adds to charge up and get death singers power when they have enough death singers power make sure to do your countdown because the buff will have a countdown so the other person who will be in middle will be able to kill the knight on top right and top left dedicated spots so just be careful uh, people who are on right have to kill have to get ready to kill the wizard and the knight, which will which is going to spawn after the wizard. The knights are going to drop a buff called Brand Claimer, and you're going to have to pick up the Brand Claimer. The second person will pick up the Brand Claimer and will drop down to the person on right and left uh, on both sides, and they will make their way to the guy who's on the totem, and they will attempt to steal their buff. And the person who was on the plate first will have enough that singer's power but remember they will lose their buff but whoever has that singer's power will hop onto the middle plate in order to progress this part of the encounter make sure all of your dead singer's powers uh stacks are drained before you hop on and then you're gonna kill your wizard and then kill the knight and then keep going with the rotation and keep stealing the buff now remember, there are a couple of things you're going to have to take note over here. Is that they're gonna, there are unstoppable champions, so make sure to have an unstoppable weapons to kill them because they can kind of ruin the entire encounter because this encounter is going to be... You're going to have to be really fast. And if you're doing three-man rotation, you'll have to just constantly keep swapping and stealing the buff. And once you have the brand claimer buff, you all you have to do is go to the guy... Uh, who is on the totem and steal their buff and then you're gonna have to stay on the plate and charge your dead singer so just keep rotating this i think it's like five or six rounds and the, the seal is gonna break and you will be able to progress through this encounter On to your first boss of this raid, which is the War Priest. Now, this is by far pretty much the hardest encounter inside of this raid, so be prepared to melt this guy and make sure to equip your highest gear and highest damaging weapons, whatever you have. I would suggest linears, snipers, um, rockets also works good, but he has so much health and he has like four phases. So rockets will run out of ammo. And if you're not lucky enough, you will not. If you don't get any rocket ammo drops, you will struggle with this boss fight. So make sure to have something with more ammo. Uh, toss on a few reserves and make sure to have two finders on your helmet in order to make this encounter a little bit easier. But basically, once you enter this arena, you'll be able to see three sides and three three massive pillars um, on each side. So... There's one on left, one on middle, and one on right. Now, each will correspond, each pillar will correspond to a plate. So, top left plate, middle plate, and right plate. Now, the way this encounter works is that it's a little bit different from D1. Now, pretty much everyone has to do something. And also, uh, there's going to be another thing which I will mention, like, real soon. So... 
Start off the encounter just like you do, and by stepping on all three plates, have like people on all three plates, and the encounter will start. You're gonna see a bunch of trolls and ads spawning from each side. Uh, we're also gonna be splitting our team into three groups of uh, two people, so two top left, two middle, and two right. Now, once once the ads start spawning, uh, just kill ads until you see a hive yellow bar knight, which is gonna spawn. He's gonna have a sword, and he's quite annoying, like, but he's really easy to kill. Once all three knights on each side are dealt with. On top of your super bar, it will say Glyph Sequence Initiated. And that's the cue for the middle person, one of the middle person who is going to be in charge in middle. They will step on their plate and it will say Glyph Sequence has started. Once Glyph Sequence has started, you will be able to see the two pillars uh, which are going to glow. It could be either two or it could be the person who steps on the middle, for, for the person who steps on the middle, he will either see either right one glowing or left one glowing. Now, if they see a right one glowing, they will have to hop off their plate because that right plate will be the first plate in order. That's why. Now, if the middle plate guy doesn't see any of them glowing, that means that person will have to hop back out and hop back on. So basically they're going to be two call out. They're going to be doing two call outs this time. It, it's really kind of like uh, annoying. And it, it kind of gets really um, too much for your brain. But basically to make it easy for you guys. It's really simple. Uh, <clears throat> if the middle person. Middle plate is the initiator. Like your middle platform starts the glyph sequence. So once the glyph sequence has started. The middle guy will hop on this plate. And if they see if right is glowing, then they will have to hop off their plates and then they will call its right plate. And the person who's on the right, who's in charge of right plate, one of the person, they will step on and stay on. And if they see if it's middle, then the middle person stays on, so it gets on their plate and stays on. And of course, the last one is going to be on left side. Once all three plates are, uh, are stepped on in order, that will begin the damage phase. The person who, the whoever person stepped on the place last will have a buff called R of the Initiate. Now that is important. That person will be holding a buff in order for everyone to do damage to War Priest. So usually what um, my team does, we usually do two damage phases in the middle. So even if the, even if the last person to step on the plate is on left, we just call that person out in the middle so we can use, like, I'll explain why. Now, once the person has the damage buff, they will all hurl around that person. And then you're just going to just wail on the boss, just, you know, hit his head. And if someone has a divinity, just, uh, you know, use your divinity and while others do damage. Wells are important because he shoots a hive boomer, which can kill you. And it can get quite deadly. Because he also shoots those swarming taken thingies. Do damage enough uh, times. And uh, you're going to have to watch your countdown. Now you're going to have to keep in mind that you should always count down. Whoever holds the buff has to count down. If you don't count down that will make things hard for other people who are in charge of the second part of this encounter. Which I will explain now. Now the second thing which is going to go on over here is. When the person who steps on the last plate, when they get the buff, there's going to be a random taken knight which is going to spawn. Now, what you're going to have to do is have four people damaging the boss. Two people will have to look out. Two people are known as hunters for these knights. And these knights, what they do, they're really important for this encounter because whenever these knights are killed, they will drop a buff called a Brand Claimer. In order to this brand claimer, what it does is that whoever has the first aura, the second person who's in charge of killing the knight, the first person who's in charge of killing the knight, they will go kill their knight, pick up the brand claimer buff, and they will have to get ready to steal the buff from the first guy who had the damage buff. So 
they're gonna have to do a countdown and usually i like to steal the buff from the damage person buff guy uh when they say two and then you steal the buff the other person who have they will like kind of have the buff because they stole their buff and then the second person who is in charge of killing the knight basically a second hunter will have to go find its knight and kill the knight wherever it can be on right side you'll just have to call out uh, the first the first hunter has to call out where the knight is spawning so it will make easier for the second hunter uh i mean knight hunter to actually go kill the knight and pick up the buff that knight dropped and the, that person will be able to steal the buff from the second damage buff guy basically it's it's a lot to take in but this is how i can you know how i can explain like the best way but in order to make it short for you guys basically you're gonna have three rotation of damage phases if you do it successfully basically if the first person will count down from 15 to 2 the second person will steal their buff that will from that goes from 10 9 8 and then if when the second night hunter kills the knight and steals their buff they will have a damage phase of five more seconds so basically you're extending the damage phase every time in order to do the most damage to war priest once you dealt enough damage once you're once it says immune you're gonna have to hide behind in one of these pillars now usually you can hide behind to the middle and right pillar by damaging from the, by damaging him from the middle what i'd like to do is uh hide behind the middle first and then you can hide behind the right pillar and then hopefully if everyone is fast enough you can actually do damage and enough to kill enough damage to kill him you will be able to hide behind the left pillar and in the fourth phase, in the fourth phase all the pillar all the pillars will be gone so make sure to kill him that run this encounter relies on fast killing of knights and counting down. This is very important. If you don't count down, you will pretty much ruin the entire run for everybody. After killing the war priest, congratulations. First of all, you just made it past. You just made past one of the hardest encounter. Well, actually the hardest encounter for this raid uh the next part is the the maze to golgoroth it's actually pretty simple i will uh, just put up a picture over here so you can see where to go there is a hidden chest if you activate all of the four plates or i think it's five plates you, you'll be able to see how to activate them and there's like a certain order which you can go just follow the path on the uh, mentioned on this picture and you're all set your next encounter is going to be the Golgoroth boy. Golgoroth, uh, he's quite simple, uh, nothing too hard. Again, you're going to have to be very fast on this encounter. This whole raid relies on like relies on like how fast you do stuff. But basically, you'll enter this room, you'll see a big orb uh, in the middle which you'll have to shoot down in order to uh, spawn Golgoroth. But uh before you spawn him, uh, really important things to note is that in this one, you're going to have to use six orbs in order to like fully complete a damage cycle. So you're constantly going to have to be shooting orbs from left to right. And then I'll explain that in a second. But first things first, uh, start the encounter by shooting down the orb in the middle. Golgroth will spawn and have your team again, three people on left and three people on right. And two of those people will in be in charge, will be in charge of taking Golgoroth's gaze. Now, once uh, you kill the adept acolytes, that will trigger his back to open, and uh, person on left can take the first gaze. Just make sure the other person is, you know, distracting him so that the first person can shoot his back, you know, safely and you know quickly. Now, once you kill all the uh, Adept Acolytes, basically all of our Acolytes, um, his back is going to open. The Gaze Taker, the first Gaze Taker, get ready to take his Gaze, while the others will be will be will will have to get ready in order to shoot down. They will basically have to get ready to shoot down one of the orbs to damage him. Now, when they shoot the orb down to damage him, it will drop a pool, which all of you are going to hop in. His stomach is going to open when the gaze taker will take his gaze, and you all shoot his stomach. Now, 
another quick thing to note over here is that he will choose someone with like unstable light your screen will basically turn green and on top of your super bar it will say unstable light whoever has that inside pool make sure you are away from your fire team you can actually go to golgoroth when you have unstable light it kind of does damage to him but you everyone else do damage and the second person who is in charge of taking the gaze they will set up on the right side since you know the person who has the first gauge will be on left so it's easier if they jump on right and uh <clears throat> get ready to take the gaze and the gaze taker do remember to count count down again because again it's going to rely on countdowns and your how depending on how fast you do it but once the second person takes the gaze the other people they need to look at their right top right they will see another orb and they will have to shoot down that orb as fast as possible and another pool another when the when that bubble will break it will you know drop a pool and then all of you are going to have to move to your right and then basically do more damage to him until all of the six bubbles or pop i think it's six bubbles i didn't count but uh, it's, it is it is like six bubbles and then you're going to have to keep rotating uh right and left and there's one bubble uh which is going to spawn at the like a kind of like a middle ish kind of thingy so uh just make sure you use you drop every bubble you see and make sure to maximize all your damage now linears are good over here snipers are also good and uh, yeah you can pretty much two phase them once you're done with the first phase, again, more sets of ads are going to spawn. More Adept Acolytes are going to spawn. Just kill them to trigger his back open and get ready to take the gaze. Once uh, you do the rinse and repeat, he will die and you're on to the next jump and puzzle. After you kill Golgoroth, you will be welcomed by the dick walls. Yes. Uh, basically, it's the second jump in parkour puzzle. Uh, there is a hidden secret chest over here. Uh, just try not to get hit by these uh, these moving walls because they will eat you and pretty much actually kill you on impact. So uh, be careful. Uh, follow the path on screen to get to the hidden chest. Uh, you're going to have to pull out your ghost. And uh, yeah, just keep moving up until you go inside this like room, get the chest and move out of the way. Now, uh, there are some plates which people are going to have to stand on to activate the platforms. Uh, it's quite simple and easy to figure out. So the people who are taking the plates, make sure to stay on the plate until the last person to make it on the plate. And it will activate all of these hidden platforms. And then all you're going to have to do is jump up, just follow the path on screen to make it to Daughters of Oryx. to the second lost encounter of this raid which is the daughters of oryx um this encounter is uh, pretty straightforward uh, but there is a slight change to this encounter um the slight change is basically wherever you see the knight that will be the first plate which is gonna have to activate 
and make sure whoever gets chose between like chose uh, for torn between dimensions make sure to go to that plate as well now whoever's in charge of the plate uh, i think it's just easier to assign numbers to these plates uh, so usually what me and my team like to do is we call the back ones two and front ones uh, one so l1 r1 front ones l2 r2 uh, back ones now in this encounter uh, wherever you see the knight basically they will spawn randomly it could be any of the plates it could be l1 r1 it could be uh the for the first ones are always before you start this encounter the first one they're usually on is once but after when the first person to get torn between dimension grabs the uh grabs the blight or the buff and drops down and the second person will be um chosen randomly and you'll be able to see another knight which is going to spawn on either side so it, the knight can spawn on this time it can spawn on l2 and r2 as well so keep a lookout on these uh, knights because they need to die in order to activate the play and you're gonna have to deal with like a lot of ads as well in the meantime oh and don't forget the snipers they will make your life miserable so if you have like a scout or a sniper rifle make sure to take them out as well while you can um <clears throat> basically wherever the first plate is going to be the person who gets torn between dimension will have to go to the first plate and when you step on the plate and when you're torn between dimension you'll be able to see where the orb is and wherever you see the orb on top of the plate that plate will have to be the next to step on so let's say um if l1 is um if L1 is the first plate and then you step on L1, you'll be able to see an orb above it, uh, above like R2. So the person who is in charge of R2 will have to step on R2. And then that will spawn the hidden platforms up in the air so that the person who is torn can go do parkour and grab the buff and come down. You'll have to do three rotations of uh, this blight in order to like... Uh, slam one of the witches make sure when you're when you're the final person to get torn uh, make sure to slam uh, when you grab the buff make sure to slam on the one which is not singing basically the one who is shooting at you make sure to slam on that one and then get ready on the opposite side to do damage rockets work really well if you have adept hotheads and gallahorn that also works uh war cliff coil also destroys the bosses both of these bosses you'll have at, you, you want to have at least 20 seconds in order to kill one witch uh, when you kill the witch they will do like a wipe mechanic so make sure to stay inside the aura if you're outside if anyone's outside the aura you will die after killing the first witch just repeat the process one more time and kill the second witch to big daddy oryx the final boss of this raid congratulations on reaching to the final boss first of all now this part will have to like it it involves like the same mechanic for plates just like the daughters uh, so just keep that in mind it's pretty easy uh, but in this one the plate is gonna be like once you spawn once you spawn oryx uh, and kill your knights on each plate which is going to spawn like a taken knight uh there's gonna there's gonna a lot go like a lot of stuff like go on over here so the first thing is i'll try to make it as simple as possible the first thing you need to do is kill the knights which spawned on the plate that will allow oryx to move on either you know either of those side so he moves maybe he can move to l2 or l1 or maybe he will move to r2 or r1 but wherever he moves that's going to be the first plate where the runner has to go and the person whoever is in charge of that specific plate will have to jump on top of that plate when oryx slams and he, remember he doesn't leave any buff he just slams and triggers the plate and it it glows now when he slams per the person whoever gets torn make sure you go to that plate as well now when you step on the plate you will be able to see the same orb which you saw in the daughter's encounter 
and then call out that plate wherever that orb is so if you see oryx on r1 and you step on r1 and if you see the the, the orb the blight on l1 so just call out that l1 has to step on their plate once they step on their plate the person who's torn will be able to see the hidden platform then they will be able to make it through to the blight and grabbing the buff now again uh, you're gonna have to grab the buff like uh three times for this encounter again and the final buff is gonna have to be uh, uh you're gonna have to hold down your action button to get it and then there's gonna be a vessel of oryx which is gonna spawn in the middle and you're gonna have to like steal the the aura from him and kill him uh killing him is not really necessary but um just you know it's just safer so just kill him and then stay in the middle the person who holds the final buff make sure you're in middle as for the other stuff which are gonna go on over here there's gonna be like four ogres which are gonna spawn corresponding to each plate and you're gonna have to melt them as fast as possible make sure they don't move around make sure they don't do anything because when they're killed they drop a taken blight well like a ball which will have to detonate in order to do damage to oryx but basically uh just kill your ogres as fast as possible just make sure to help out others too if they can on top of that after the ogres are killed you're gonna see a hive knight which is gonna attempt to take attempt to like eat the blight and they're usually spawn like adjacent to the um to where the blight is so like wherever you see the blight they're gonna be on the opposite side like diagonal side of like um uh, diagonal side of whatever you know where your orb is where your blight is uh, they're yellow bar but they usually die from like one sniper shot so they're pretty easy make sure to kill them before they eat the blight because that is important once you do all that uh and once the aura once the but once the person who uh, who steals the, the the aura stays in the middle while the rest of the four people will stop uh, go near their bombs but do not go inside it they're gonna just chill by the bomb until oryx says until above your super bar it says oryx calls upon darkness when he's when he does that go into your bombs and wait for your name to pop up it will say your name has detonated the blight once you see that just rush back inside the middle to the guy who's holding the aura and that's pretty much it once you stun the bot, once once you destroyed all the blights, you will have extended damage phase, and then Oryx will get stunned, and his chest is gonna open. And all of use all your heavy ammo, sniper ammo, supers inside his chest in order to do damage. Now, after one successful damage phase, he will move back to middle. He can do two things. He can either spawn a huge blight, which he will start teleporting one by one inside the blight and there you're gonna have to kill a shade of oryx he's basically a smaller version of oryx with a sword he will charge at you and he will disappear in the mist and he will teleport around to make sure to kill him as fast as possible people who are outside make sure to not get any of the taken thralls in because that will be quite annoying but you'll be able to make it the second thing he does is that he kind of like leaps backwards and spreads his wings and then starts summoning like these giant me taken meteors uh if he does that uh just start running around and make sure do not overlap with your with your teammates because it can get them killed and once he does that it's literally just rinse and repeat you're gonna have like massive you're gonna have to have like massive dps and all that stuff uh once you once you send him to like final stand uh there's gonna be like two ogres which are gonna spawn yes final stand is a little bit different in this one two ogres are going to spawn once he's in final stand there's one on right uh by r2 and l2 and kill them they will drop their orb and once it says oryx calls upon darkness you detonate those and you while the other people are consistently doing damage and he's gonna die eventually and that's pretty much for the oryx encounter i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you guys found this uh useful and i hope this video is going to help you out clear oryx thanks for watching and i will catch you guys in the next video ggs